We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We... Uh, Mike? Yes? Cabling. Not, oh! Not caroling. I thought you said caroling. So you want cabling? Yeah. I can do that. If you want to pass the Network Plus exam, you've got to know about coaxial cable. Even though coaxial cable really isn't used in networking too much anymore, it's used enough that we need to be able to discuss the aspects of what makes coaxial cable coaxial. So what I want to start off with is this big old evil cable. This is an original, what was known as thick ethernet cable, Sirsa, a long, long time ago. Let's just say I had a lot of hair back then. Anyway, it's a, even though we don't use this cable for networking anymore, it's a good way to explain coaxial. So if you take a look at this, this is a very classic piece of coaxial cable. We've got a little conductor here in the center, and then we've got some insulator, and then another conductor on the outside. And that's where the term coaxial comes from, because you have two conductive materials that are centered around a single axis. So anytime you see that, you always know that you're going to have two types of conductors, and that's what coaxial cable is all about. Now, when you're talking about a coaxial cable, there are two things to keep in mind. Number one, the name of the cable. This type of cable was called, still is called RG8. So coaxials will always have a number that starts with RG and then a, a number that separates them. The other thing to keep in mind is that coaxial cables are measured by an impedance. So for example, this RG8 cable has an impedance of 50 ohms. Now, let's take a look at another type of coaxial. This was also used in networking a long time ago. It's kind of faded out. And this particular type of cable is called RG58. Now, what I want you to see more than anything else is this connector. Oh, by the way, RG58 uh, also runs at a 50 ohm impedance. But it's the connector right here that the Network Plus is interested in. This is called a BNC, Bob Nancy Charlie connector. And here's a, something to connect it into. You get a little twist, and it's connected. This little guy right here is known as a T-connector, and back in the old days, we would plug this part into the network card, and each end would run out to other network cards. Back in the old days, there were no switches or hubs. We just ran everything on a daisy chain like this. And who was ever on the end would get this little guy. This is a terminator, and you would put that at the end of each run of cable. Now, even though RG8 and RG58 are gone, there is one place where we still see a lot of coaxial, and that's with cable modems. So I've got right here a piece of RG6. RG6 is 75 ohm, and it's going to be distinct in that it's going to have what's known as an F-type connector. Anybody who has a cable television has probably seen this. It's a screw-in connector, and it's pretty much a guarantee that you've got a cable connection of some type. So the F-type connector is very important. So, even though coax isn't used that much, it is on the Network Plus, and if you've got a cable modem network, you're definitely going to be running into some of this. So remember, you've got different grades, when they'll always start with an RG. RG6 is the big one I want you to remember, because that's the one we use today more than anything else, and that's for cable modems. And also make sure that you can recognize a BNC connector from an F-type. It will be on the test. 